Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to start looking at a very large subject, the subject of three-phase electricity. Now in this video we're going to consider what a three-phase waveform looks like, we're going to have a look at some lighting connected up in a three-phase fashion, and we're going to have a look at a three-phase motor and how changing the frequency will affect that motor. There'll be more videos on this subject to come, so I hope this video is a good introduction for you. So to help us develop our understanding of a three-phase system, what we've done is we've set up a rig here uh, that's been lent to us by uh, the Matrix Group, who've lent us their Electronics board. We've got here a three-phase generator, and we've got coming out of there three line conductors that we've got connected onto three lamps. Now, I'm sure you can already see, looking at what's going on with these lamps, they're behaving in an interesting fashion. The reason that we can see these lamps flashing on and off, this is actually what happens with any AC supply. The current is constantly switching its direction. It's going first one way around the circuit and then the other. So technically speaking, most of our lights are constantly flashing on and off, just like we've got here. However, because the current is changing its direction so quickly, we don't normally see that. In fact, when we're using a filament lamp, we can see that the lamp doesn't get time to cool down and it appears to be steadily lit all the time. Here, using this uh, nice bit of kit here, what we've done is we've slowed the frequency right down, we've reduced it a lot, and so we can actually see them flashing on and off. Now the key point to see here is we can see that the lamps are actually uh, flashing on and off in order. They're almost going around in a cycle there. And that's quite a key point really for helping us to understand how three-phase uh, circuits work. So, Another thing you might notice about this is there's no neutral connection. Again, that'll be something that's explained in more depth in a future video, but if you've got a balanced load, you don't need to have a three-phase connection. So we've got three lamps here of equal power, and so no neutral connection is required at all. What we'll do now is we'll bring in an overlay and we'll have a look at the uh, frequency of our circuit on an oscilloscope. So as we can see here, we've got a three-phase waveform on the screen. Now what we can do, which is quite clever, is we can switch off uh, two of the uh, readings from the oscilloscope and we can see that that is what a normal AC waveform looks like. So we can see there it's constantly uh, rising and then falling and as it goes above zero that indicates the current is going in one direction around the circuit and as the current drops below zero all that means is that the current has changed its direction and is now going back the other way around the circuit. If we now turn on the other inputs from our oscilloscope, we bring back our three-phase waveform, and we can see there uh, that if we were to measure how far apart each one of these waveforms was in terms of degrees, we would see that they are 120 degrees apart. Now what that means is that at any given moment, if one of the waveforms is at its peak, then that means that the other two waveforms uh, will be at the uh, in the negative value uh, and that's what's going on there and what's very interesting about this is that if uh, the uh, three waveforms are balanced so if we have exactly the same amount of current if we average out those currents so if we uh, take the peak waveform and add to it the two negative values of the other two waveforms we actually find that the waveform equals zero and that's the reason why, if you've got a balanced load, if you've got the same amount of current flowing through each one of the conductors, you actually don't need to have a neutral because where the three uh, currents meet uh, between the loads, there is literally no current flowing through that neutral. So in the uh, example that we looked at on the screen, uh, we saw the three lamps. Those lamps were equal loads, they were equally balanced, which means that there was no need for a return neutral connection back to the supply. We can also uh, think of this in terms of a balanced three-phase motor. So a balanced three-phase motor requires no neutral because the uh, neutral currents balance out and there is no neutral current. So that's very interesting. So what we'll have a look at now is a three-phase motor in operation. So a typical application of a three-phase supply would be one where we connect a motor, a three-phase motor. So these are really the workhorses of the electrical industry. If you walk into any kind of industrial unit where manufacturing is taking place, where there's conveyor belts or things like that, for a long, long time, the three-phase motor has been the workhorse of that. So what we've got here, as you can see, we've got our three uh, line conductors coming out of our three-phase supply. 
and they connect uh, into our three-phase motor. Now obviously this is a teaching aid on a normal motor we'd have to take the lid off this and do the connections inside. So what we're doing here is we're connecting uh, into one side of three coils that sit inside the body of the motor. There will be a lot more videos coming about motors and their operation and the way they function but for now let's look at how we can control the speed of this particular three-phase motor. So we've got our three line supply coming in the top here and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect this motor up in a way that's called star. Now what that means is that we're connecting together the other side of each coil to each other and that gives us a star connection. So we connect those two together and we will connect those two together like so. So now we've got all three of those all shorted out and connected to each other. So now if we turn our power supply on we can see there that we're getting a very very slow rotation of our motor. So we're getting a very very slow rotation of the motor as you can see down at the bottom of the screen here. Now the reason that's so slow is we've got the frequency of our power supply turned right down. So if I now increase the frequency of our power supply we can see that we're starting to increase the rotational speed of the motor so it's doing more revolutions per second now and if we turn it up to the 50 hertz which is the standard frequency that we get in this country we can see there that we get the normal rotation of a motor there so that's operating quite nicely. What we're going to do just to demonstrate a point is we'll change the frequency of this back down so we can see now that's turning uh, more slowly again. Now if we want to change the direction that that motor turns in how do you think we can achieve that? Well the simplest way of doing this with a three phase motor is simply to swap over the polarity of any two of the phases that we're bringing in here. So we'll isolate the supply and then if we swap over just any two of the incoming three phase supply and if we connect this up again you can see there now we've changed the direction that motor goes in. So that is the easiest way to change the direction of the motor. You'll notice again if we look at what's effectively the neutral side of our motor where we've connected it in star there is no connection from this side of the motor to the neutral of our supply because each of the coils inside this motor are exactly the same which means that there is the same amount of current coming in through each one of these supplies and that means that we've got a balanced load. So there is absolutely no neutral uh, requirement because there is no current flowing back through the neutral of this circuit.